On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to show you how to install some gauges in our Project Integra. All right, we have plans to turbocharge our Project Integra, but before we do that, we want to monitor what's going on with the engine vitals. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install the gauges on our Project Integra. Now, what we're going to install, since we're planning on turbocharging it, we're definitely going to have a boost gauge. That way we can monitor and make sure we're getting the proper amount of boost. No boost creep, and we can also tune for that. We're also going to put gauges in there to monitor the vitals like water temperature. Since we're making more power, that creates more heat. We want to make sure our cooling system can keep up with it. And of course, we're going to monitor both sides of our oil with oil pressure and oil temperature. Now for our Project Integra, we chose the red digital gauges from Glowshift. Now these have the electrical sending units. Glowshift has a ton of different designs, styles, and colors to choose from in mechanical and electric. They also have several other uh, accessories that you need to install your gauges, including gauge pods. Now we chose a dual gauge cluster bezel and a dual gauge pillar pod for our Project Integra. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to strategically place the gauges so that uh, the most important ones are visible at just a glance. So what we're going to do is on our pillar pod we're going to use our oil pressure and our boost because those are the things you don't want to take your eyes off the road but at a quick glance you can see what's going on with those two uh, functions of the engine. And then on our bezel we're going to go ahead and put water temperature and oil temperature. Now, as we said, uh, Glowshift also makes accessories for their gauge sets as well. For example, we're going to put an oil temperature and an oil pressure gauge in our Project Integra, so we need a place to tap in to get that oil temperature sending unit in the line of oil. So Glowshift makes this sandwich adapter that basically you take the oil filter off, put the sandwich adapter in there, put the oil filter back on, and then you can put your sensors in the actual sandwich adapter itself. They make a similar device for the water temperature as well. You simply cut the hose and you put the adapter in the, ho in the line of the water. That way you can put your temperature sending unit right in the flow of the hot water from the radiator. Check out our gauges overview video. It goes over the basic types of gauges and styles along with the most common used gauges and the applications which they're needed. Now let's go install our gauges on our Project Integra. To remove your gauge bezel, in some cases you'll need to remove the steering wheel. Now in our case, this was made easy with our NRG quick release hub. All right, now we've test fit our gauge cluster bezel in our Integra to make sure it would fit before we got to this point, and it fits just fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install our gauges in the bezel itself. Now it comes with these standoffs that you need to put on the back of the studs, and you're going to put these on here. They don't need to be uber tight. They just need to be snug. You don't want these are very fine threaded, so you don't want to put too much off on them. So we've done that. Now on the back of our bezel, it, we have a little bit of a difficult time getting this between the actual gauge and the bezel itself. So what we've had to do is, I've had to modify this a little bit by bending this around just a little bit just to make, make it follow the contour of the gauge. Now we're going to install these at the same time. Got our gauge because it, it's a little bit of a tight snug fit. So we're going to install them at the same time. Put those in place. Now this again, this, all this does is hold the gauge in place. Make sure we have it lined up correctly. Then we're going to take and put our washer and our nut on the back like that. Give it a little bit of a, just a little snug here, nothing major. Again, just to hold it in place. You don't want to put too much tension on the back so that it hurts the gauges or it hurts the bezel. So now that we've got that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook up the wiring. Now the cool thing about uh, the glow shift gauges, all the electronic ones use the same basic harness. So this just clicks right into the back of the gauge itself. Now we have four wires to connect. We have a hot and a ground, which is our red and our black, of course. 
Red goes to 12 volts, black goes to ground. We have the green wire, which is going to be our signal wire. Now the signal wire, since all these gauges are electric, they have sending units that actually send the signal to the actual gauge itself. The sending unit signal wire is going to go to the green wire, and the orange wire, what it does is you hook it up to the headlights so that when you turn your headlights on, it automatically dims the digital gauges for night driving. Okay, so we know that we want all of our gauges to function all the time. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use, hook up the common wires together. We're going to hook up our common reds so we can just get that out of the way so we just have one connection that has to be done at that point. We're going to just tie these together. We're going to use our NSPA connectors so we have a good solid weather type connection. We're going to do that with all the wires that we can do. So we're going to do our, our grounds our hots and our wires for our headlights. Now our signal wires all have to go to separate sending units so we're not going to tie all of the greens together. We're going to tie the blacks together, the reds together, the oranges together, and then the greens go to each individual separate sending unit. Now to install our boost vacuum gauge we had to have some sort of vacuum source. So we chose to pick up the vacuum source from our fuel pressure regulator. Okay, now before we install our sandwich adapter, what I did is I basically put this up in place to see exactly where my sensors should go. There are several ports. We have one on the side here and then we have these two on the top and this is the configuration that works best for our particular vehicle. Now what I've done since then is I've gone ahead and pre-installed and tightened up our oil uh, pressure sending unit, our oil temperature sending unit, and then of course I put our plug in the port that we're not going to use. Make sure you use lots of Teflon tape uh, in order to keep that from leaking. Also, know that there is a rubber O-ring seal on this that needs to go towards the block because the oil filter itself has a, a uh, seal on it, but uh, the one that goes to the block, you need to make sure you seal it, so put the rubber O-ring side to the block of the engine. Also, Make sure you read your instructions completely. On this particular oil uh, pressure sending unit, I would have wired it up incorrectly had I not read the instructions, and here's why. It has uh, written down here, it has WK and G. Now, I would have thought that G would have been ground. It is not. That standard for green, which is the signal wire. So the WK is actually the ground wire. So make sure you read your instructions so that you install your sandwich adapter and your oil pressure sending unit correctly. Our glow shift sandwich adapter fits over the original oil filter bolt. Then use the new adapter bolt to hold the filter adapter in place. Now since we're taking our oil filter off to put on our oil filter adapter, this is the perfect time to go ahead and change the rest of the oil. Check out our Driven Oil series at the link below to see what oil is best for your vehicle. All right, we're going to strip a little more insulation off of our black wire here so we can put on our connector for our oil temperature gauge. Get that out there a little bit. And we're going to double our wire over like that. Now we'll pull our little rubber boot up over the top of it. This will keep everything in line. And then what will happen is we'll plug our black wires in like that and that will give us our ground connection for our oil temperature sensor. Okay, since both the oil pressure switch and the oil temperature switch need a ground, we're going to go ahead and wire those two grounds together and put a, on one of our NSPA eyelet connectors on there so that we can just go to a common ground on the chassis. Okay. 
Now we're going to go ahead and install our water temperature sending unit. Now there's no easy place to put the sending unit in the Honda engine. Uh, the port that we would normally put this in to go into the water jacket is actually filled. So GlowShift makes this water temperature sending adapter and what you do is this sensor goes actually in this adapter and then it goes in line of our radiator hose. Now we've already drained our radiator down a little bit so that uh, there's no water in the supper hose. We're going to go ahead and cut that, but first we're going to go ahead and put our sensor in. Now one of the things I want to tell you, this is a little nugget here, uh, always use Teflon tape and we talk about this all the time, but a lot of times people will put the Teflon tape on backwards and so anytime you, when you start putting your uh, sensor in or whatever you're putting in with the pipe thread, the uh, Teflon tape actually backs off. What you want to do is you want to treat it just like you're screwing it into the threads itself and you turn it in the same direction. So you're going to go righty tighty to put your Teflon tape on there. Now as we screw it into our adapter, it's not going to come unthreaded. It's actually going to stay in there and actually go into the threads like it's supposed to. Then we're going to tighten it down and we'll be ready to cut our hose and put this in our Integra. Pick a nice straight spot in your radiator hose to cut. This will make installing your adapter much easier. Next, refill your radiator with a 50-50 mix of water and antifreeze solution. Now we'll work on our wiring. We're going to tie our grounds together to make things easy. Okay, we've decided to run our temperature gauges, our water temperature and oil temperature gauge around our gauge cluster. So what we're going to do is I've run a guide wire through between our gauges. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie that wire to our two signal wires and we'll pull it through so we can hook it up to the back of our gauges. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to run a guide wire down between our A pillar and the dash so that we can pull our signal wires and the power wire that we need to our gauge pod. So as I said, not only are we going to run our signal wires up here, but we're also going to run a hot wire. Our gauges are electrical, so we're going to run a positive and a ground up here as well so that we can power our gauges as well as get the signal to them. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to hook up our common hot wires and our common grounds to our gauges because these are electrical, so they all have to have a hot and a ground going to them. Then our signal wire on this series of gauges from GlowShift are always green. So we're going to connect our white wire from our oil temperature to our oil temperature gauge. We're going to hook up our signal wire from our water temp also to the green wire on the water temperature gauge and of course the same for our other gauges. After we do that, we're going to fire them up and see how they work. Now that our gauges are connected, it's time to do some wire management. Tuck all the wires in and install your gauge pods. To power our gauges, we installed an ATA circuit to make sure our gauges have a fuse link in case of an electrical problem. Now our gauges themselves need grounds as well. So we tied our grounds together and found a common place to connect them.
All right, now that we've got our gauge installed on our Project Integra to monitor critical engine functions, we can continue with our performance upgrades. Popular brands we carry are Intellitronics, Autometer, and of course, what we chose for our Project Integra, Glowshift. If you have any questions, feel free to call one of our knowledgeable sales staff at 1-800-419-1152 or email us at info at andysautosport.com. We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.